Praise God for the CCF Exalt team. Thank you very much for leading us into that one song. Now to open our time in prayer, let's call on our Visayas Regional Pastor and Hub Pastor of CCF Cebu, Pastor Pat Melikor. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, thank you, Rocky. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for gathering us together again this afternoon. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to freely uh, pray to you from all over the world. We thank you for the technology. We also are aware, Father, that in many parts of the world, they are not free to pray. And yet you have given us the freedom to really cry out to you and pour our hearts to you. This afternoon, Father, we pray for our speaker. We pray you will use him to convey to us the message from you. We pray also for the technology behind this Zoom prayer meeting. I pray that uh, it will be a smooth event for all of us. And Lord, we pray for everyone here that it will be a special time for each one of us to really be refreshed by you as we come to your presence. Lord, we pray for uh, the result of the elections, Father. We pray that uh, all of us will be able to accept the results. And Lord, we even pray that we'll be good examples of how to submit to authority, to government authority. And Father, as the, all government offices are preparing to transition. We pray for a smooth transition. We pray for those who will be assuming the reins of government on June 30, that they will prepare well and they will govern. And Father, we are excited what you will do in this meeting this afternoon. May we really experience you in a deep, profound way that only you can make possible. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Pat, for that uh, wonderful heart prep of a prayer for all of us. And now, to share with us God's message, He needs no long introduction. He is cool like that. Please welcome our beloved regional pastor of the greater Metro Manila area, Pastor Vic Kisumbing. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to intercede. And this Friday is like any, no, nothing that can compare with praying together. So thank you, Brother Rocky. And thank you also, Pastor Pat, for praying for us as we start this uh, devotion. Let me ask everybody, when was the last time you thought of money? Be honest with me. When was the last time you thought of money? A lot of people, they wake up in the morning, they already think about where am I going to get money? How am I going to challenge myself in getting more income? Many, many times we always think of money. But can money give us happiness? That is the title of our devotion today. Can money give us happiness? We learned from Pastor Peter last Sunday that money by itself is neither good or evil. But how we deal with it is another thing. Money, good or evil, choose wisely. That was the start of our series. A wonderful series, I must say. So let's think about that. And today, as we devote ourselves to prayer and a short time, in having a devotion, I want you to reflect on this. Is money good or evil? Well, it depends on how we look at money. Our choices on spending, saving, and even working to earn will impact our future. We are to choose wisely. And to do that, we also need to understand the theology of money, which was shared by Pastor Peter. And let me give you just a short brief on that. Number one, he spoke about two treasures. Jesus desires for us to have two treasures. He doesn't want us to waste our lives going after the wrong ones. 
where your treasure is, that your heart will be also. It means where you invest, dedicate, and put your efforts in, your heart and passion will also be there. The second one is two perspectives. The theology of money tells us that money is neutral, but we need to have the right perspective about life and money. Because until a person's perspective changes, they will only view life on a temporal level. And of course, the third one, my favorite, two masters. The most important decision is to see Jesus as our one and only master. Joshua 24, 15, I love this passage, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Reminds us to choose who we will serve, and we need to choose wisely. As Joshua stated, may we also make that commitment to serve the Lord. If we make him master of our lives, we will be able to make very important decisions and actions that will glorify God. What is your prayer today? May I just caution you, don't put your hope in wealth because it never satisfies. Would you agree? Don't put your hope in wealth because it never satisfies. Matthew 6, 25 and 33 tells us a lot of lessons. Verse 25, it says, do not worry then saying what will we eat or what we will wear for clothing. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Oh, what a comfort. What confidence can we get from this verse 33 for all of us to consider? I know that worry is a big problem for a lot of people always worrying about whether they've got enough for retirement, especially for people like me, if they'll be able to make next month's mortgage payments for many, or send their kids to school, whether high school or college. Many just worry a lot. While it's a good idea to plan for the future, there's always a danger of allowing yourself to worry too much, not trusting in God's provision and instead trusting in wealth. Would you agree? As we read these verses, we understand that God will provide for us because he knows we need these things. But as we read verse 33, there are more important things to do, like seeking his kingdom and his righteousness. When we do that, we'll find that we're always in his care. No matter what, he will provide. Let me ask you, are you, your eyes fixed on the temporal things of this world, like money and possessions? Or is your gaze focused on an eternal treasure that never rusts, never fades, never disappears? And for this time that we have right now, I would like us to go on a reflection. Why this early? Because I believe that reflection gives us focus. And as we go through our devotion, I want us all to focus on the important things. Let our minds not be wandering. So let me start off with the first one. Do you believe that God will provide for you? I believe that God will provide for us and for me especially. He has never failed me. He has never failed us. And for many, they will always be praising the Lord. And I believe that that's important to take home today, that God will provide. The second one, the second reflection is, do you focus on the eternal rather than the temporal things of life? You see, many times our focus is on what it is that we find here on earth. But let us focus on the eternal. Let us focus that one day we want to hear God tell us, well done, my good and faithful servant. The third one is, do you find joy? in knowing Jesus rather than accumulating wealth. Wealth can come and go, but joy in knowing Jesus will be there forever. So my dear friends, for a minute and a half, I'd like you to reflect on these three items. So let us reflect.
I pray that our reflection today makes us more focused. I pray that we are focusing on the Lord as we wake up in the morning, as we think about the Lord during lunchtime, and as we go to sleep in the evenings, our reflections are in the right, right focus. Do you want to change your focus today and find Jesus making him your Lord and Savior? And I'm sure you would want to. And there are some instructions we can take to heart in the verses we will read right now. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 17 to 18 tells us, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. What do we pray for on a day-to-day -day basis? Not only during Fridays, but every day. When we think of money and wealth, is that what we pray for? Or do we pray for something bigger than us? Four things I would like to suggest, and I want us to pray for each one of them. Number one, don't be arrogant. That's what the verses tell us. Work hard and become successful in life. But don't think of yourself as better than others because of your material wealth. Philippians chapter 2, 3 to 4 tells us, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. This is a verse that is very dear to me. I used to be arrogant and always self-centered. I'm not saying I'm today a completely humble person. A measure of one's humility is how people look at you and observe your behavior. I pray that God will always consider me as work in progress in that area of my life. I want to go out of my way to minister to people in all walks of life. Many times you need your wife to support you in that endeavor. I remember some years back when Techi received a text from one of our D group members requesting that I shared the good news to a brother-in-law who was critically ill in the hospital. My first reaction was, can that wait for another day? Don't they know it is a Sunday? I was finishing speaking in a satellite for two services. I was tired and was really trying to wiggle out of it. My wife Tachi said, we must proceed to the hospital because the person might just die that afternoon. She suggested we first take a pizza for lunch, then let us see if I still don't want to. Lo and behold, after taking the pizza, I was ready to go to the hospital and share the gospel. All it needed was a simple, simple pizza to give me extra adrenaline. And I praise God that my wife convinced me to go and minister and to forget myself being inconvenienced. My dear friends, you need a push from the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it is your wife who plays the Holy Spirit. Well, that person that we shared the gospel eventually passed away in the next few days. I praise God we were able to share the gospel to him and he accepted the Lord. The second one is don't put your hope in your wealth. Proverbs 23, 4 to 5 says, do not weary yourself to gain wealth. Cease from your consideration of it. When you set your eyes on it, it is gone. For wealth certainly makes itself wings like an eagle that flies towards the heavens. Don't get tired in gaining wealth because that is not important. Do not weary yourself, it says. Or in another version, do not be obsessed to gain wealth. A good job or business and steady earnings can be here today and gone tomorrow. I remember when I first started working in a company that introduced a product, which in my mind was going to change the market during the 70s. My boss who hired me and several of us from our alma mater said we were possibly going to revolutionize the market. 
But after two years, the company fired our boss and replaced him with the son of the owner. And well, not so long afterwards, my colleagues and I were asked to move on, meaning we were fired. Praise God, this happened during the early days of my working career. I did not know any better, so it did not bother me. The lesson that I learned early in life was I must prepare for anything that might disrupt my steady income, and that is to save for a rainy day. Sad to say, I did not learn until much later. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 2 says, On the first day of every week, each one of you is to put aside and save, as he may prosper, so that no collections be made when I come. My dear friends, do you save? Or do you spend it even before you receive your pay? You see, many people live on a hand-to-mouth existence, even if they're earning a lot. They spend as if money will keep on flowing every payday to meet their expenditures. And they maximize their expenditures. That is the mistake of many. My friends, always be wise and seek guidance when you make all kinds of investments or even just big expenses. The question is, can you afford it? Do you pray before making those decisions? Do you and your spouse agree to it? The third one is be rich in good deeds. The third and the fourth one is almost similar. A good deed is a free and voluntary act of service towards another person. Doing good deeds for others is the fruit of your salvation in Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. And that's why I say in the fourth one, be generous and willing to share. Generous people are synergistic. They build organizations and contribute to the success of others. Think about it. Who wants to do business with someone who only takes? I think of many who do not want to join a small group because they have in their minds, what will I get from joining the small group? I remember the phrase that selfish people share. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? I always remind people that joining a small group is a way to be a blessing to many. Don't join to be blessed only, but be but to be a blessing to many. And my dear friends, that is a fantastic way of having the right perspective when you join a small group. I believe we should pray for opportunities to be a blessing to others. Do that on a day-to-day -day basis. Be a blessing. Be an encouragement. Be someone that people will not shy away from. Be the person that people will say, I want to be like him. My friends, first, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 8 tells us, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And verse 8 says, And God will generously provide all you need, and then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. You know, when I look at the, at the early Christians in the book of Acts, there's one person there I love to always quote. Acts chapter 10, verse 2. This is the story of Cornelius. Verse 2 says, He, Cornelius, was a devout. What is devout? Passionate, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. Can you imagine? Everyone in his household was like Cornelius. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. My dear friends, the challenge to us is, can we be a Cornelius in this time and age? I believe we can with God's help, with God's direction. So let's think of ourselves as another Cornelius in the 21st century. My dear friends, generosity is caught, not caught. Generosity is caught, not taught. Modeling generosity is critical. Children are always watching and copying what parents do. So my dear friends, can money give us happiness? The answer is no.
Only a relationship with Jesus can give us joy and happiness. And my dear friends, all you need really is Jesus. And Jesus will take care of each and every one of us. Let us pray. Father, I know that I have sinned against you and my sins have separated me from you. I'm truly sorry. And now I want to turn away from the past sinful life toward you. Please forgive me and help me avoid sinning again. Make me aware that my focus should be you and not to accumulate worldly wealth. I believe that your son Jesus Christ died for my sins, was resurrected from the dead, is alive, and here's my prayer. I invite Jesus to become the Lord of my life, to rule and reign in my heart from this day forward. Father, please send your spirit, your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. For we pray all this in Jesus' name and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Vic, for that wonderful devotion. You know, guys, it's great to always check where our focus is on, right? We should ask ourselves, is it on the material or is it on the eternal? Do I find joy in Christ? And are we able to say Christ is enough? Praise God for this devotion indeed, brothers and sisters. Now we continue and we'll take this time to pray for our nation, the world, and our church. You can also send and share your prayer request through our chat box and comment section. And we encourage you to pray for the items you will see in our chat as the Lord leads you. So for the next few minutes, there, there will be prayer slides shown on our screens to guide us in our prayer time. So let us all take this time to pray.
so good to witness his church praying for one another. I am beyond blessed by this time of communing with God in prayer and praying with all of you. Don't you agree? If you agree, can you send a heart emoji with a smile on your face? <laughs> you know, I don't see a lot of people smiling outside. So if you could smile right now and give me a heart emoji, that would be really nice. Even if I can't see you and you're just at home, give me a heart react and a smile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And to close our time in prayer, let me call our Mindanao North and South Regional Pastor. Please welcome Pastor Joseph Bayawa. Good day, everyone. Let's close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our cry, our prayers, prayers for physical healing, prayers for healing of relationships, financial provisions, and many more. And we pray, Father, that uh, as we lift this up to you, we are excited of your answers to these prayers, knowing that these are that your answers will be for our good and for above all for your glory. We continue to pray for our country, for your hand upon our elected government officials as they transition and lead us. And we pray that those who do not know you yet as their Lord and Savior, that they will come to know you personally, that we will be led by people, by leaders who are God-fearing and really attuned to your heart. We continue to pray for healing of strained relationships brought about by the results of the elections, are brought about by passionate uh, preferences uh, of people of the candidates. We pray that we will be objective and intentional in focusing on the mission and vision you have put in our hearts. We also thank you, Father, for the series that we are having now, which is, which is on money matters. And thank you that we started last Sunday. And we pray for your speakers, your, your servants, your messengers this Sunday, Pastor Ricky Sartu and our brother, Julius Rayala, that you may fill them with your Holy Spirit as they share with us. And we pray that you, we too will be able to internalize and apply the principles you will teach us. So thank you, Father. We praise you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Joseph. What a blessed time to be with all of you. Just to remind everyone, you can continue to stay in this Zoom prayer room until 1.15 p.m. And let me encourage everyone to now do at least two things. Number one, chat your prayer request that God has put in your hearts in our chat box and comment section. And number two, browse through the chat box to pray for the prayer items sent by our brothers and sisters, okay? Also, for our quick announcements, this Sunday, we will continue with our series on, uh, on money matters, good or evil. So we hope to see all of you this Sunday. Our Sunday service speakers are... Pastor Ricky Sartu for the morning service and Brother Julius Rayala in the afternoon service. And also, we would love to hear your stories of how God is working in and through you. So in the, in the coming slide, you'll see the details on how you can share with us your answered prayers and your testimonies. And again, just a reminder to all of you, the prayer room is open until 1.15 p.m. It's been a delight with all of you this afternoon, CCF fam. That's it for me. Thank you for joining and see you all again next Friday here at Intercede. Have a blessed weekend. Bye-bye.